Welcome back to the Line Podcast. My name is Aaron Alexander, and for newcomers to this program, it is a place that we bring together the world's leading experts on all things health and wellness to help you optimize your mind, body, and movement. Today's episode was with my friend, Tamar Geller. Tamar is a pretty big deal in the world uh, for lots of reasons. One, she's just a tremendous human being. She's one of the sweetest, brightest, most I don't know, captivating. It sounds like what you call a dolphin. Um, but she is very dolphin-like. And uh, she is the New York Times bestselling author of The Loved Dog. She is just the dog trainer of all sorts of celebs, ranging from... Uh, Tony Robbins, Oprah, I've got like a list here, Ben Affleck, Ellen, all sorts of people. Uh, this conversation is fantastic. It is one of my favorites and uh, we get into dog psychology and human psychology and the many parallels. Uh, we also get into Tamar's specific story and uh, just really excellent. You're going to get a lot from this conversation for sure. Uh, get your pen and paper out, take notes and um, yeah, just so excited to get to have Tamar here. Thank you all so much for checking out the website, alignpodcast.com, A-L-I-G-M podcast.com. On there, we have best dang show notes on the internet. If you have any curiosities of like links or references we mentioned this in this conversation, they will be there at alignpodcast.com slash podcast. And uh, also, you can start the five-day movement challenge. Absolutely free. Breaks down fundamentals of how to integrate more effective movement into your daily life. Remember that... The gym and the yoga studio and Pilates and all that stuff, those are great places to practice movement, but your whole entire life is an opportunity if you have the basic fundamentals on how to do so, and that's what that breaks down. Hope you guys devour this conversation. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you for reviews on iTunes. Thank you for reviews for the Align Method book. Thanks for grabbing that thing. Thanks for sharing with your friends. Here we go. Back to the podcast with the beautiful Tamar Keller. Hello. You know, Tony Lamar. Robbins talks about the two millimeter change. Yep. That, that it doesn't have to be huge. It's the two millimeters. I know. I want to talk to him about that, actually, because some of his instruction posturally could be... Uh, improved. Improved. <laughs> it's actually teaching people to flare their ribs, which ends up making structurally the person be more um, unstable. Interesting. And so that was something that was interesting. Um, oh, yeah. I want to snap. Pow. Connecting the videos. Um, but just in general, it's, it, is, it was an interesting thing with so many people. They are seeking to portray stability and confidence, but without looking at the deeper layers of stability and stack through the feet and through the knees and through uh-huh. the pelvis and the lower back and all that. So if we just kind of fake it in the upper body, um, that's not necessarily always going to directly translate into stability through the rest of the system. Yeah, because it it's be, fake. It may be fake. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's, it's, but a lot of us have to start from faking it till you're making it because most people, I think, ultimately, we we are feeling, I think, in our core that, um, as we are, we're not enough. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or that the world is not a safe place or whatever. So it's kind of like faking it with the body language is very primal. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, that's where it starts, right? Yeah. You know, and then when people make money, they start faking it with watches and cars and whatnot. But ultimately, think about chimpanzees and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, body you can, posturing. You can increase testosterone levels by being in a fancy car, wearing clothes that you're proud of, or you, know, you changing can your increase your patterns. Mm-hmm. testosterone. Yeah, yeah. So it says research, but research can be off as of well because we're, we're always once that you sign the scientific flashlight. Me. I can tell you that as a woman, when we see a guy come with a. The, crazy yellow Flame sports car up. making yeah you know, on, you know we immediately go <laughs> yeah of course yeah he's probably got a <laughs> little wiener like but while he's in the car with his endowment he uh will feel more confident and if Which you can great, feel yeah. more confident there will be a physiological i see translation in that i see you know so it, it is quite fascinating to me how we can do that and i think that we can create some momentum via faking it and then that can get us through to a certain exactly. point to start creating life changes and maybe environmental changes maybe relationship changes yes and, um and it is of great value to look at things you know like the back end yes as well and do yes. some of like the inner work a hundred percent a hundred percent no i think what you're doing is outstanding it's incredible i mean your book is amazing because your yeah. book is like and particularly for somebody like me who I'm not, 
you know, I'm not, I did not belong to that tribe that you belong to where you guys really love working on your spirituality and everything through your body. I mean, you really honor your body. This is not from an ego place. This is truly from a place of honoring. Mm. And, I, you know, I'm not, I just, this is not for me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm terrible, I know, but I mean, for me, you want to punish me, put me in the gym with Audrey and uh, with Aubrey and you and Kyle. Yeah. I mean, it's punishment for me. I would not like that. Yeah. But I blown away by you guys hmm. because the way you are doing that and the way you're looking at the body and everything is is a way to connect people with themselves yeah. and with them as part of nature. That is, to me, is incredible. And your book was so great because you went step by step and, and, and you, got, you brought so much research into it. So it's not just an opinion. It's not an exercise regimen. It is really like layer after layer of why, from a physical point, from a spiritual point, everything, how it's all connected. You connected so many dots there. It, it was just brilliant. I mean... Just thinking about how much we can do with our eyes, with our vision, yeah. which makes so much sense, but nobody talks about it. Yeah, yeah we have uh, infinite tools at our fingertips, but for the most part, you need to have the eyes to see it. You know, that's like what Viktor Frankl, you know, mm-hmm. Viktor Frankl answered for me. Of course, man me. looking for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. His, his thing was, his, his, it's like I'm more of an optometrist than a psychologist. Yes. Because you know, I'm just augmenting people's vision just so slightly that they can start to see the things that were always in front of them. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I mean, I really love, you know, Tony Robbins is a very dear friend of mine and I've yep. studied with him for a few decades. I've, I've modeled Tony for the last probably 10 years. He's, to use his his terminology, her NLP terminology. He's amazing. And one of the things that he says is that we're a creature of deletion, where there's so much information come our way, and we cannot, our limited human brain cannot take it. So what it is, we are filtering it, everything. We're filtering what we let in. And obviously what we let in fir- first are things that are not going to hurt us. Yep. Right? We're looking at things. Is this going to hurt us out? Is this going to bring us pleasure? And then it goes from there. So... It's kind of like the way you train your body, it's almost like we have to train ourselves how to look for things that actually empower us. For me, with my work, I do it through dogs, where I teach people. I do not allow people to give comments to dogs. We do not give comments to dogs, but we'll talk about it le- next thing. Hmm. We'll talk about it later. Yeah. Um, but what I am teaching people, you know, people like to do gratitude list or yep. to set the three things they're grateful for in the morning and at night. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. That's not going to change your life. Hmm. That's not going to change your dog. It's kind of like if I'm in a relationship with you and I'm going to be loving to you only a couple of times during the day. We can't sustain a relationship, not with a dog, not with ourselves. So the way I work with people is to somatically get it into the body is by learning to notice Learning to notice, to be an op- optometrist, hmm. the way you said it, to learn to notice. So I'm with them, right? I'm, we are with the dog, and I'm like, what is your dog doing right now that you like? What is your dog doing good right now? And your dog is, you know, the dog is doing nothing. And I go, okay, so he's quiet. You like your dog to be quiet? Great. Why don't we let the dog know? So shush, shush. Number one, to recognize. And the second part is to put it actually to words. To bring it into our conscious, yeah. do you understand? To take what we el- eliminating, what we are completely can- not taking in, and to turn it to 180, where we are noticing what is existing that we like, and what is not there that we are happy that is not there. Like a dog is not barking. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Totally. I think we are also trained to be with our bodies only when there's pain, yeah. or to be with our dogs. And to pay attention only when there's problem. Yeah. It's kind of like, no, 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 no. Let's connect. Let's connect, in your case, with the bodies. For me, it's with your dog. The dog, for me, you chose that particular dog because that particular dog is a teacher for you. I have no idea why. You know, but let's start the journey together and things going to be revealed. Yeah. What is, why this dog in your in, in your life's journey. Yeah, I was thinking this morning, <clears throat> I grew up in Pennsylvania. Oh. And uh, a lot of the folks in my surrounding environment, I remember is very common 
or you're like, oh, like, hey, how are you doing? And there's a very common tendency of being like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm hanging in there. Ugh. I'm getting through this. Another life thing. day above ground is yeah. good. Yeah, right, exactly. Yes. You know, and so I think that that's a train pattern of our perception of how we we got. Sorry, we're in Los Angeles, Santa Monica, um, but we train ourselves. Uh, each moment with our thoughts. And I think for the most part, our thoughts are kind of like running amok in our lives. Yes. And I wonder, is there, is that, is that the same with dogs? It is, but dogs are much simpler than us. You know, I did the Hoffman process. Are you familiar with the Hoffman process? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Changed my life. I've done it eight and a half years ago. I'm obsessed. I'm a student of the journey, you know, I'm, I'm just, I love learning everything. So every morning the teacher sits with you and asks you, how are you feeling? And if you say good, they say good is not a feeling. And they give you the list from the nonviolent communication. You know that list yep. of feelings, all the good feelings and all the negative feelings. And they say, so what are you feeling? Because what's happening is we are so, I'm sorry, I have a small head. No, it's okay. um, we are so not in touch with not feelings, not anything, you know, and, and, and everything that we are doing, you know, Hoffman process, you, me, we're trying to get back through whatever modality to get people back in touch, in alignment. Yeah. In alignment with what? In alignment with who they really are. Not with the masks, not with how they look, not with how much they have, how many likes on Instagram. Mm -mm -mm. Alignment with them. Yeah. The, the one thing that they're going to take with them to the grave. Do you see what I'm saying? That is the beauty for me. I think it's interesting with... Uh, dogs. There's. I know that you're a fan of Eck, Eckhart Tolle. Yes, I love. And uh, a, a quote that I've I've heard actually through a previous inter interview that you had done was from him. Was like paraphrase some along the lines of dogs are deeply attached to their like most natural wild selves. Yes. You know, and so we can learn through animals how to get more deeply in relation to this this part that is like our truth. You know, but we have, it's like, I think it's, you know, we start off in our highest truth when we're born. Yes. And then we kind of turn into these like jerks. And well, then we start to come back into our truth as we, as we die. You that's know, and exactly that, right. That, <laughs> that middle space, it's like, how do we navigate maintaining that childlike part and all the lessons that we'll have on our deathbed? How can we instill that into who we are right now while we're in traffic? Yes. But, but <laughs> think about it. The baby is born and immediately the baby is given a name. Yeah. A name. And, and, and just that, you are Aaron. Yeah. And it's kind of like, if they would name you a different name, there can be a different trajectory. I mean, yeah. everything is being labeled. And I don't think people become jerks. I really, truly believe that we are being um, forced in order to operate in a society mm -hmm. to completely be um, divorced of who we really are, what we really feel. It's kind of like as children, you know, the moms have to go and our moms have to go and take a shower but then the baby will feel abandonment yeah. you know and you cannot say that she's wrong and that the baby is wrong this is just part of being in a human body and for me being with dogs is it's kind of like we cannot take the safaris of africa into our living rooms we can't. We, it's kind of like, uh, you know, and people think nature is like safaris and, and all these amazing places, Galapagos. No, no, no. Dogs are part of that incredible nature. And that dog with their vibration, because, you know, earth and everything have incredible vibration. They are in, with you in your living room, in your kitchen, in your bed. You're bringing that force of nature as a reminder. And what people do when it comes to dogs, instead of looking at the wisdom of nature, through dogs that are saying, oh, you're supposed to give me unconditional love. And that's where people are given the wrong information. Dog parents, I call them porents, given, are given the wrong information. They're trying to take that pure thing that is here to teach us and instead to turn it on their face that you need to be obedient. Your needs don't matter. Why not? Yeah. The dog's needs matter. Your needs matter. Let's let's start, let's start opening. Let's start. It's all very tight and very should. Yeah. A lot of shoulds. How does a person start to address some, um, perhaps even like unseen or unknown childhood patterns that aren't serving them? How does one begin the process of even like starting to witness oneself from your perspective? I mean, I, don't you think physical pain or emotional pain? 
Yeah. Don't you think physical pain or emotional pain is the best like alarm sounds of that doesn't feel good? Yeah. Well, why, why, does, why it doesn't feel good? Yeah. And then the, to deconstruct, I think the toughest thing, and again, my darling friend Tony says that is your quality of your life depends on how the quality of your life depends on how comfortable you can be with discomfort. Because what happens when we feel pain? Let's say physical pain. People immediately take Advil or something. They yeah. don't want to feel pain. Suppress it. Suppress it as opposed to, okay, let's go. Dr. John Amaral, who is my dearest friend, he goes into the place of pain and he gets you connect with that. And he makes you breathe into it. And he takes you back where did the pain starts from, mm-hmm. where you release childhood traumas. Because it's all somatically as well as emotionally. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm preaching to the choir. You know that. So it's to feel. When I'm working with a dog and somebody have a strong reaction to something with a dog, I'm like, okay, let's just stop and look. I'll give you an example. I was with my girlfriend last night, and she's telling me about her dog who loves to play with a toy, but he never brings the toy back. He always takes the toy and runs away. And, um, and I asked, and what's the problem with that? Well, that's not the way I want to play. A dog's supposed to fetch. And I said, supposed to, according to who? Your dog's pre- preferred game is chase me. Because when we look at the six needs that a dog has, you know, I took Tony's six human needs, yep. and five of them meets dog's needs, which the needs are for certainty, to be everything to be predictable, safe, that I know that everything is okay. But too much predictability, too much safety can be boring. So we need uncertainty. We we need variety. These are a couple of needs. Two other needs is the needs to have love and connection, love and belonging, where we fit in, okay? But the next need is to be significant, to stand out, to be noticed. Another need is the need for growth, the need for learning. Everything in nature, every blade of grass is either growing or dying. Nothing stays the same. Dogs are the same. And the last need for human needs is the need for contribution. Dogs do not have that need, actually. Dogs have a need for physical exercise. And I'm not talking walking around the block. I'm talking for running, for losing, for shaking, you know, for yawning, for jumping, for true physical exercise. So back to my girlfriend last night. You don't think a dog has a need for contribution? No, I don't. Really? No, I don't. Love and connection. (laughs) Okay, I can see that. I think that they get it from the love and connection. Yeah. You know, so anyhow, um, um, so I asked her, what are your dog's top needs? And that's immediately, she goes, love and connection. And I go, why? And she goes, because um, when I come home, he's very excited to see me. And I say, and I said, okay, he loves you, but top two needs. What are the top two needs? We all have all needs. We all have all the needs. All dogs have all the needs. But the top two needs that drives us completely map, chart a different path in our life. Who our friends going to be, how our life going to be, what we're going to wear, what we're going to do. Same is with the dog. So I said, let me tell you a little bit about dogs. Dogs play three games. Primary three games. Chasing games, wrestling games, and tug of war. And the reason why is because these are the skills that they must master in order to survive in the wild. This is what they need to learn and be really good at so they can hunt. So when your dog, you're giving him a toy and he's he's running away from you, he's actually inviting you to chase him. What is he trying to do? He's trying to show that he's going to be an awesome chaser when they're hunting, to, that he can do that part of the hunt awesome. Once he's going to chase the animal, because nobody can catch him. He's the best at maneuvering and going under the table and everything. So you are making him wrong, you know, for something that is excellent it because it doesn't fit your idea of how a dog should be. Mm. Are there any other areas in your life where somebody is doing an amazing job at something, but we try to fit them into our idea of what it should be like as opposed to, you know, kind of like your work. Can you be malleable? Can you be malleable with your belief system? Can you be with, sit with your discomfort that things are not falling into place the way you want to in order to be able to sit back and see what it is? Like, I really love a book called Siddhartha. 
Have you read that yeah. by Herman Hayes? Yeah, I haven't actually read it, but I'm familiar with it. It's an amazing book. It's a book that I try to read every few years. I'm due to read it now. But I'll one of it. the things he talks about is that it's the story of the prince Gautama Siddhartha, who later on became the Buddha. He was a prince. He came from wealth, a lot of wealth. And he was like, that is not enough. And he started looking and he went through the pleasuring of his body. He went with a woman who taught him the pleasure of sex and everything. Went with somebody who was different teaching and then he went he finally met a, a man who was just operating the ferry that will let uh, that will let people cross the river and he was teaching him you have to learn how to fast you have to learn how to wait and you have to learn how to think hmm. because all these things are how do you manage your thoughts the four agreements be impeccable with your words the words you speak to others the words you speak to yourself thinking yeah. But the fasting, can you be hungry and not take the deal just because you're hungry? Hungry for food, hungry for money, hungry for recognition. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And then how to wait, meaning how to be comfortable with your discomfort. So back to my friend yesterday who was telling me about her dog. And I said, his number one need is actually significance. He wants to be the best at what he does. And he wants you to be excited for him for that. Instead of, oh, but all dogs should give me love. Dogs should give, it should be about me. Mm. Uh, uh, uh. If you get a dog, you better be ready to give first. Like any relationship. Yeah. Any relationship. Like JFK said, ask not what the country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. And she looked at that and she goes, oh my God, I'm doing it with my son. I'm doing it with my son. When my son clearly is preferring to do these kind of activities and I want him to do other things because I want to prevent him from experiencing pain. And she... Like Siddhartha. That's his upbringing. That's exactly. That's exactly. She came from love, but because the dog needs were different than what she thought they are, all of a sudden, boom, clarity. All of a sudden, there's opening. We finished our dinner and she went home so excited to now connect with her son in a completely different way. And that's why she got that particular dog. Hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? And yeah. I'm sitting there and I'm just in awe of how it all... Is there something to... Because I feel like in my path, a, a, a good chunk of my existence has been to seek significance and it's easy to mask it with like growth or contribution or whatever, but behind that is actually seeking significance for my contribution. Uh, is there something to loving yourself where you're at or loving others where they're at in whatever you know class or whatever system or, or, or part of that that they're, that they're in to allow the spaciousness to go into the higher you know contribution and growth and living in that? Or, or as a person... If you're a significance person, you just is that who you are forever? So right there, just because you would say that, I can tell you, you are not driven by significance. <laughs> well, it's been a process. I'm watching the layers unfold. <laughs> and we all have those six needs. We all, I love when Oprah says that after each interview that she does, it doesn't matter who it is, Michelle Obama, Beyonce, anybody, they look at her and just said, how did I do? Mm. We all want to know that we did good. Yeah. Do you understand? So... To take that part of us, it's 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 just not natural. Yeah. It's like you know, it's like saying no. I will take away you being good looking. I mean, this is wrong. I mean, I'll take the. You're plan. good looking too. Well, thank oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're talking like tomorrow is sexy. Are you serious? Yeah, you are. Well, because you're so lit up. It's very beautiful. Thank you so much. You know, growing up, my parents always compared me to chimpanzee so I still look in the mirror and I'm like oh you're cute because I still think of myself like I'm a chimpanzee <laughs> it's terrible I'm going to start work with the therapist soon hopefully he can help me Whoa. you know um, I, have, I, I, I don't have a good self esteem thanks to my parents but, um, oh, really? but it made How me who I am that? what's the process I'm working on it I'm working on it I'm working you haven't on had it. a good what do you think about the power of language languaging is so important oh what my god what do you think god. about that moment of I don't have good self esteem I wonder if there's anything, like, would you tool that? Oh, my God. How would you suggest I will tool that? Please I'm not tell suggesting me. anything. I feel like you already would have suggestions even beyond my you own. You see, I'm very blunt. <laughs> and I'm blunt with myself, too. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't like to make things 
worse than they are, but I don't like to make things better than they are either. Mm. So what I was saying is like, okay, here's the issue. I've done a lot of work. I've done a lot, a lot of work, but I'm still a student of the game. I'm still learning. Yeah. I'm still, I, I will learn till the day I die. And if me not feeling pretty or sexy makes me do good in this world, then far out. Then it served the purpose. It served the purpose. Look, I really, really, really believe, I really, really, really believe that we all play roles for each other and we chose parents and we chose experiences, horrible ones and good ones. And it's all divinely orchestrated. Mm -hmm. I chose those parents. I chose them. I don't want to be around. My mom passed away. I don't want to be around my physical, my biological family, but I honor them. I'm grateful for what I've done, what they've done for me and, and how I can use it now to help others. H had they not treated me as, 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 as they call me scum. That was my nickname. Damn. Yeah. Your had, parents. Yeah. That was my nickname. You're, scum. The, bla you're the black sheep. Yes, we yes. had the inverse relationship. I was the golden child. My oh, you were the golden black, child. My brother was a black sheep. Oof. Which is equally, I don't know, equally, I couldn't say because I'm not in their, their experience, yes. but it's, um, it's not easy for either party. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I do not know, but I know had I been the golden child, I would not be contributing to the world the way that I am. Maybe. You know, well, certainly not me. the way. It would be different. For me, not. I would be married in Israel to a pilot, three children. I would completely following, which but if is you're my an, sister if, is married to if, a pilot with three children. But if you're an empathetic golden child with a black sheep for a brother or sister, oh. I feel like it's like, wow, that's it's almost the same thing. That is heavy. That's what you were. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 The empathy. Yeah. The empathy. Wow. That is... That is a game changer when you have, when you have empathy. I wonder with that, does everyone have equal access to empathy, or is that something that is that something that can be cultivated? Of course, it can be cultivated, but you know we're all born with our own uh, temperament. Yeah. Personality changes. Ch personality is what we acquire, but temperament, we're born with that. That's what science shows us. Yeah. So there are certain things that we all come here to this life this time around. We had so many other lives. I mean, it's, you know, to her specific lessons and with these specific people. So if your lesson is empathy, then you will be attracted. There are going to be things in life that are going to get you there and going to put you in front of it as the opportunity. Yeah. And I feel the dogs are some of the best teachers of empathy. Because I don't think anybody will doubt the dog has a pure heart. And yet, what was um, pro 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 propagated in TV yeah. is that a dog wants to dominate you. <laughs> you know, it was taught on TV that dogs have two, source, two forces in nature. Either dominance or submission. It's kind of like, hello, how about love? Yeah. Darwin yeah. Charles Darwin talked that love is the number one. And then on TV come, no, you have to be the alpha to your dog because your dog wants to dominate you. Have you felt in your life uh, like 100% worthy of love? Like no. Like you are love? I'm still not. That mm. is my biggest work. You've never experienced it? Even in plant Feeling medicine? Feeling worth of love? Yeah, plant medicine, yes. Oh my God, plant medicine. Oh my God, you're going to make me cry. Plant medicine has been the best thing for me. Yeah. Plant medicine with the right facilitator because I've been, I'm not going to mention names, but I've been to places, you know, in Costa Rica where there was not even one trained facilitator and it was unsafe for me. But mm -hmm. to doing it with a proper facilitator who help you connect the dots, it was somatically, intellectually, emotionally, everything. Do you know the first time that I did ayahuasca after years of just doing heart medicine to open my heart to be able to receive love. What is heart, what is heart medicine? Heart medicine is like white lily, it's acacia, it's uh, different plants mm. that are designed to open your heart. I'm working with a phenomenal facilitator. And you're dieting specifically on these plants for a time? No, 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 no. Okay. You just, you know, instead of drinking the tea, yeah. you take that, you know, the, the medicine that was derived from white lily. And, and it just opens your heart and you feel, it's kind of like it's, I, I never done synthetic drugs in my life. I never been drunk in my life. I mean, okay. I, I stay away from all these things that take you out. I want things that takes you in. Yeah. So 
it's it's derived i don't know exactly how it's done but um and and you take that things that was derived that it's not synthetic it's organic it's the, the real deal and somehow it opens you and and you are more they have things for your body they have things for your heart they have things for your spirit but for flowers it's it's incredible it's yeah. amazing it's it's completely amazing and i've done it for a few years before i actually took tea yeah ayahuasca because i was afraid of that how would you describe that experience of of really being in touch with with love you know the biggest issue for me when i'm doing plant medicine is that it feels so good that i don't want it to end <laughs> because you j- it just i'm being reminded of how good it is to be in the flow in mm-hmm. that love in that way i love myself and i'm so grateful for my arms i'm so grateful for my breath i mean i i'm sometimes when i'm you know i'm like I'm kissing. Yeah, myself. I was doing it last night. I was like biting my my wrist and my. my I was like doing massage. I was like, oh, like bite therapies. Like you can make love to yourself, right? I, I we have absolutely. shame around loving ourselves. Exactly. Self deprecation is far more socially accepted than self love. Isn't it true? Because you're an arrogant true? asshole if you love yourself, Isn't especially it true? if you're a white privileged male. I know, but the conversation needs to be changed. Yeah. And that's why people go to dogs, because dogs love them unconditionally. So they think dogs should not love unconditionally, and dogs do not love unconditionally, by the way. But we all have that craving. This is our birthright. Yeah. Our birthright to be loved just because. Nothing else. Nothing else. But that is the journey, isn't it, where we are getting back there. To me, that's what it is. Yeah. At least it is. I'd like to take a quick break and thank the sponsor of this podcast, Organifi. Organifi is a company that I've been utilizing for about three years now, and they absolutely use the highest quality products that you could in a supplement. Um, they are USDA organic, they are gluten-free, they are soy-free, they are dairy-free, they are vegan, and uh, essentially it's, it's real food put into a powder form. Everything they're putting in here is legit stuff. I'm holding my hands, the acai and cordyceps infused red juice, gently, fi- gently dried superfood powder. I quite enjoy throwing this stuff into my water before going to a workout and just makes the water taste delicious. Uh, and it fills you up with all of that restorative goodness in the form of antioxidants and adaptogenic herbs. And I uh, highly recommend it. So you can get yourself 15% off of your purchase by going to Organifi.com, O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com. And then utilize the Align code, A-L-I-G-N, at checkout, and you'll get yourself a cool 15% off of whatever the heck you grab. Their protein powders are absolutely delicious as well. Again, once again, it's all USD organic. It's vegan. It's good stuff. So utilize Align code. Go to Organifi.com. O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com. Align code. All right. Here we go. Back to the shizzy with the beautiful Tamar Geller. So, uh, in your experience, when that sensation of being love starts to dissolve, um, how do you reintegrate that and, and take those lessons from those experiences in, into your, your life? So, I think part of I the... I know it's a process. Yeah, but the beauty know? for me with plant medicine is that a lot of it is done for me. I don't even have to do anything. I, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. being changed. Yeah. You are being changed in the most loving, beautiful, subtle... Maybe we never need to do anything. Maybe that's the whole thing. Well, you know, I mean, <laughs> isn't it the whole thing that we are human beings, not human doings? <laughs> yeah. And maybe we're working so hard. And when you're listening to the law of attraction, to Esther Hicks and everything, she's like, yeah. stop. Just connect to what feels good. Just stop. Connect to that vibration. Just stop. What feels good? Your pillow, your pillow feels good. What feels good? Can you train yourself? And to me, that is the biggest discipline. Can I train myself that if something doesn't feel good to immediately go back to something that does feel good? It's kind of like the animals in nature. I remember you and Aubrey were talking on a podcast where his dog ran into the into the door, into the, into oh, the yeah. screen, right? Yeah. Lobby. And Lobby. what he does afterwards <laughs> is shake, 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 shake. It's kind of like get back to center, <laughs> right? Right. That is the beauty of nature. Let's go back to center. Every plant try to reach to the sun. Yeah. You know? And what is our sun? 
what is when we reach to our son where is the equivalent of that to me is to feel good and I think if we can teach teach kids right from the beginning to identify and to hone on what feels good what feels good mmm You know, and, and then be that becomes your, that. you got it. That becomes your center no pain, that you no compare gain. everything towards, you know, because you're still going to go and experience, but you are anchored, anchored into your feeling, anchored into a spiritual belief, belief, whatever that may be, you know, how can we anchor ourselves? The work that I do with dogs, the first thing that I teach dogs is how not to connect from the reptilian part of the brain. Of impulse and how to do whatever they can to avoid pain but instead to trust and travel to the frontal cortex where it's the secure attachment with the porent and then the porent has to be mindful to be right there because if your dog did not growl at that dog that he met on a walk and every fiber in his being told him you need to growl to let the other dog know that the You are threatening not to come next to you. Instead, you chose not to growl, to surrender that your mom, that your dad is going to protect you from that dog. Something that you can do well, very well on your own because your relationship is more important. You yeah. understand? You as the mom or the dad of the dog, the poor rent, poor rent, better be there. And I think all of us, where it comes to... You know, kind of like even what you've done with me with the work is like we've been hurt so many times where we were willing to be there for somebody, yeah. but that somebody wasn't there for us. May it be a parent, may it be a girlfriend, boyfriend, may it be whatever. Yeah. So we learn, oh, I cannot trust. It's scary. I wonder with you, what, do you think there was any definitive whys in any roads that uh, you went into... The direction that you've had of, of helping others and helping yourself and being this light in the world um, compared to potentially going down another track that would be prob- likely like more expected of you as a child. So um, when I, I used to be an intelligence officer with the elite special forces in yeah. Israel and um, they tested me. They test you before you go to the military to see where you are naturally gifted in. And if they put me over the, obviously in the physical, you know, building people muscles up, I would fail miserably. You're really in your body. I, I mean, I, I hope you, this self-esteem esteem thing is a real thing. You're like, you're in the 99.9 percentile of people that are in their body. Are you serious? Yeah, look at you. Look at this quality of your skin. Like you're fit. You're great. You're, But you're because right. I'm eating healthy. I'm eating healthy for decades. And you're thinking healthy. Yeah, your thoughts form your cells. Really? <laughs> yes. No, I know that the thoughts, I don't think, I'm like, you know, I'm so hard on myself, you know? Well, stop saying that. I, no, I know, but I'm working on it. But see what I did there? I did bad dog training. I should have been praising all the other times as opposed to slapping you when you said the thing. No, the pattern interrupt is okay. How do I train you like a dog? No, pattern interrupt is okay. I know that's not okay. okay in this patriarchy. No, it is okay. <laughs> You're talking to me. I, I honor dogs. <laughs> I honor dogs. I revere dogs. I serve dogs. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? I do not want them to be submissive to me. I want them to be my teachers. Yeah. Teachers for them and teachers for me. So no. So what you did, I was saying something and you did pattern interrupt. Yeah. That's okay. I can use a spray bottle when a dog is like so much in their, you know, pattern that they cannot think. And I'm like, spray bottle with water. And I'm like, ignore it. Yeah. The moment I interrupt the pardon, boom, connect with me. Let's connect. What I, do you need? How I, can I serve you? I wonder in those moments where you declare that you have low self-esteem, if, if perhaps it would change at all that the declaration was that I've had self-esteem, low self-esteem, and I'm in process. I am in process, yes. Yeah. Yes, that's you know, good. So as opposed that's to having this, this, we put ourselves into the box, I love it that. feels very final. Okay, I, I hear what you're saying, and your way is much better. Well, yes. it's just a weird way. No, I love it. that. Okay. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Receive it. Receive yeah. my genuine. Oh, right. You there, you're getting into my shit now. That's a thing Thank that I'm, I'm notorious for. That's exactly. I've been notorious for, and I'm in the process of unraveling that. <laughs> Thank you. We're building together here, Damar. <laughs> But you see, didn't Ram Dass say we're all walking each other home? <laughs> we're all walking each other home. Right? Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, and that's what it is. You're right. I, I used to believe that I have low self-esteem. Yeah. And I'm in the process. Well, I, we're, we're, we're both right. And, and the truth is, I do not have low self-esteem. I do oh. think that I'm great in some areas. And I do think that I contribute something that is life-changing for dogs and the people. But where the low self-esteem comes in is me feeling worthy of being loved. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? I've that's where that. that's where I'm stuck. That's why I've been single that's most of my stuck. life and everything. Mm-hmm. That's where you've been stuck. I've been stuck for most of my life, but I'm working on that. Hmm. I'm working on that. I'm working, you know. I mean, by the time I die, hopefully I will be freed. <laughs> hmm. You know, because hmm. I would like. See, I'm, I really, I wish there was a way to know what were the things that I was hoping to learn or unlearn before I took this body of Tamar. Yep. You know, when you sit over there with your Akashic records, with your with your guides and everything, and you go, okay, that life you did that, this life you did that. You really want to go and take that life. Okay, so what do you need? What can we do to support you? What do you want us to do to remind you? Yeah. <laughs> the way. Where do you think the, the root of the, 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 the seed of I'm not worthy of love came from? For me? Yeah. The moment I was born that my mom, for different reasons, didn't touch me. Didn't mm. touch me. And on the second day home, my grandfather came in and found the brand new baby that wasn't fed, wasn't touched, wasn't anything. So I just, I think, and, and, you know, listening to a lot of people about trauma, it starts already in the womb. Yep. So I think my mom starts in the mother and the father, you know, when they're in their womb and before that. That's exactly. Yeah, we're just like this wave peeking out of the ocean. That's exactly. So I think I knew that I'm going to be born into... <laughs> A war zone, and um, and unfortunately, I think I was right. War zone at, between my mother and my father who were very. They, were, they should not have married each other, yeah. and they were very young. And all of a sudden, a baby is there, and a baby is never going to bring you. Ninety percent of the time, I think a baby makes people more tired, more therefore more anxious than when you're tired and, and, and not sleeping well, you are less you have less tools to deal with situations, you know, and, and, and it's kinda like it wasn't fun for my parents that I was born. <laughs> yeah. I so. wonder there's like all sorts of quotes that are pretty much saying the same thing. Like Rumi said something along the lines of like your task isn't to find love, it's to remove the barriers that you've created blocking 100%. you from love. What do you 100%. think what do you think the barriers, stand up barriers in your existence would be? See would when been? I go every time to plant medicine Every time, that's my intention. Remove my barriers for me to be able to receive love, to give love, and to serve at my highest purpose. Do you think the barriers still serve you? Or do you think that it's, no. you just haven't figured out the combination? That's of, a, no, of the barriers do not serve me anymore. No, they you're do not serve the, me anymore. You're carrying the raft through the woods. That's exactly right. I really <laughs> would love to find a way. I'm going to put really this damn raft love, down. Yes. Because yes, the, yes, the yes. raft allowed you to... to survive and thrive at, at you know one point in your life that's exactly. i think that's a, i think that's an interesting thing it's like really loving and respecting valuing the raft and valuing the raft if, if people aren't like you know, what the hell is talking about this raft like an analogy that's commonly used is you need to get across a river yes. you build this raft you get yes. across the river and then you Stop love the raft it. so much because it got you across the river that you carry it through the woods and it slows you down through the rest of your life you know it comes from you know for people who are familiar with Christianity, when Jesus came to some pool and there was a blind man and he said, get up, I'll heal you. And it, the, the, pool guy, the blind guy was more attached to his bedding than to actually do, I can't remember exactly, but yeah. to do what Jesus told him to do. And that's kind of like what get, got him stuck. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's very hard to let go of something that served you because it's no longer serving you. Yeah. You know, but that is the mastery in my mind mm. of how to let go. It's like I want to do trapeze training because don't you think trapeze, you're somatically going to learn how to let go of that if you want to go to this? Yeah, yeah. It's you all know, part. I wonder, I bet you with you, you would do uh, quite fine with educating a dog that feels unworthy of love on how to oh. be able to embrace it. A lot. So what's the process? I love working with dogs who, um, you see, most dogs who are feeling fear yeah. are masking it with aggression. So 99.9% of dogs who are aggressive are actually fearful. Yeah, that's a swall archetype in the book, in my book. Uh-huh. Yeah, the person, the machismo, that's chest exactly. out, showing the world that they're really strong and, you know, just they seem very hard and together and kind of... 
Um, unpenetratable. You know, unpenetratable, but in fact, there's like a, a crying boy or girl inside. That's exactly right. And when I go, when I work with all my celebrity clients, I don't see them as the mask that they put on or the success or whatever. I look at that little boy or girl. What do you need? How can I serve you? Because yeah. you got a dog because you want that love. So I'm here to, to, to facilitate a conversation, a devotion, a relationship between you and the dog that's going to give you what it is that you need, what that little boy, that little girl in you that need. You, you, you see, I forgot your question. What was it? With a dog that feels unworthy of yes. love, what would be the process of bringing them back into themselves? So the first thing that I do is what I said before. I worked yesterday with a big dog that was just rescued, and I make her dad just go around. She's lying down. And we said, down, down. And you can see her looking at us like, what are you talking about? The dog, like, you see her moving. You Sometimes you see the dogs leaning the head. Like, what are you talking about? And we're going down, not down. I'm not saying it's a comment. I'm singing it. Yeah. Why am I singing it? Because we have all the research that shows that we remember better when it's in a song. That's yeah. why they teach the ABC in a song. That's why commercials have jingles. Yeah. So Activates a whole other part of your brain. That's exactly right. Yeah. You know, and, and what I want to do is to, I, I talk to them, I want to light up different parts of the brain for the dog. I want the dog to introduce the dog to different parts of their brain that they've never been introduced to before yeah. by my voice, by my touch. So the way I ask people is everything that your dog is doing, narrate. Because you are being trained how to be grateful in action, kind of like where we started our conversation. Not gratitude list in the morning at night, but gratitude throughout the day. You're just looking at your dog. What is my dog doing right? Say it. Wow, say it. <laughs> I don't allow to say good boy or good girl. It's meaningless. You hear that in like Brazil and lots of different more like fiery Latin countries or like Italy might be an example. Brazil, when they talk, they like, or like in Mexico, back from Italy, Mexico, like, oh, que chido. You know, when you say que chido, it's like, how cool. You know, just like, there's, there's this more of this stance in Brazil, Brazilian Portuguese especially. It's almost like this bouncy dancing language yes. in a way. Yes. It's like, boink, dum, boink, and it sounds like it's like, whoa, it's like. Yes. It's like I imagine like a ball bouncing down the street when people are speaking Portuguese. Yes. And yes, that, yes. That, that tunes our nervous system. It kind of sets exactly. the tone for, you know, our, our, our state. So if you're state. doing it for your dog, quotes unquote, yeah. you're doing it for yourself too. And what's happening, you're starting to change things the way you're doing. I can be in the most scared place, completely place of fear, you know, not happy with things. Things are not going my way. The moment I look at the dog, I'm like, Sid, Sid. It's, it's so automatic now. Yeah. And it takes me out of that yucky state that I'm in. You know, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? So yeah. back to your question. With a dog who is scared, the first thing that I would do is start letting them know that they're brilliant by doing nothing. But I will tell you what it is that you're doing brilliant. I will be very specific with you, doggy. So you will know. So you will know every time you put your tush to the ground. I say, Sid, you'll start putting your tush to the ground mm. because you're going to realize, oh, it makes her happy. Let me make her happy because it makes me happy when she's singing to me. Yeah. The other thing is about touching them. And I don't like people to touch a dog like people touch dogs, like, you know, like over the head. Mm -mm. Or like, mm -mm. No. Yeah, it's like one of those awkward pat hugs. That's exactly. I'm like, I'm like, they call it baby me. burping. In yeah. half and process, <laughs> they call the baby burp hug. <laughs> you know, yeah. we don't do baby burping. Yeah. What I want you to do is I want you to touch the dog. And like if I'm going to say to you, I love you. But yeah. if I'm going to hold you. And I'm going to look in your eyes and I'm going to say, God, I love you. And I'm going to kiss you here slowly, kiss you here slowly, kiss you here slowly. You're going to feel this. Do you see what I'm saying? And totally. when I touch dogs, I touch people to slow down. Take a breath in and touch the dog and just tell the dog, I love you and a kiss. I love you and a kiss. Do you know how difficult it is for people to do that? They feel that love for the dog, but they're embarrassed. They are embarrassed to slow down and to go that, you know, and... Why do you think that is? Um, because our society is designed um, not to show vulnerability and loving somebody and slowing down. Think from our primal brain. When you slow down, you're more of a target. Yeah. 
But isn't that what, all what meditation is about and yoga is about and everything? So it's kind of like there's no better subject matter than to do it with a dog that you love. You love the dog. Yeah. You know, get in a muscle memory to do that. And then the way you would touch another person will be different. The way you're going to talk to another person. Do, do you see what I'm saying? It's from yeah. a place of true, true connection. So when you're with your dog, slow it down. Really connect with them. And I literally have people practice kiss the dog on this cheek, kiss the dog on this cheek, and third eye. And then to touch slow movements from the third eye of the dog through the, through the crown. You know, just truly, you know, very, very slow as you're breathing. If you're breathing, if you want to talk and you want to say, I love you, I love you, thank you for being in my life, I love you, I love you. You know, get in that place that it's a meditation in action. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? And what happened, the dog who was scared, every, every, it's like stacking, stacking of experiences. And when a dog is on the street and he's growling or acting like a lunatic, not to correct the dog, to realize bad dog mom I put him in a situation that is too intense for him. Mm. Let me dial it down. Mm. And people say, well, what do you mean? I should not take my dog for a walk? Build not in, right now. Build into the situation. That's exactly right now. Going for a walk. To you, it means I'm doing what a good dog owner should do, dog mom should do. To your dog, it's too much. So instead of doing what you think should be done, can you start a conversation with your dog? Yeah. And your dog will answer you honestly if you just... Be quiet enough to listen. If your dog is reactive and it's too much, don't do it there. Don't do it there. Don't take them for a walk. Some dogs, it's just too much for them to be on a walk. They are too triggered. Yeah. I think like something I've, I find it interesting is the, the art of living at your boundaries and respecting them at the same time. Because if you're continually blowing through your boundaries, it might look cool on Instagram for like six months. But typically, like you, you it's interesting. I've been, you know, doing fitness and whatnot for, you know, a, a bit. Like, like professionally, it's been 16 years, which isn't that much time. But nonetheless, it's like enough to see cycles. Yeah. And there's certain people that were like really cool and doing stuff. I'm like, wow. And then they kind of will fall off. Of and I'm like, oh, you were... You were like going hard. I remember you were talking about it, um, you know, in, in your book or one of the your podcasts about that you were seeing people, how they were putting all that stuff in the body that made them look and they were like completely ruining the body. Yeah. But doing that, this is unsustainable. Yeah. So that so the, the, like the art or science or art and science of uh, being able to just respectfully nudge your boundaries, like your shape, almost like you're shaping a pot, you know, and if you can slowly push those out and respect them and, and acknowledge them because they're there, you know, hopefully to, to keep you safe. Um, but nonetheless, don't become suffocated by them. A hundred percent. But you said the key word. The key word is slowly. Yeah. And slowly is the opposite of I want it now. Yeah. And I don't have the patience because I don't have the patience because I feel pain. I feel pain that my body doesn't look the way that I want it to look. I feel pain that my dog is not behaving the way I would like the dog to behave the way. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like, yep. Can I be patient with myself while in my, I'm in the process of learning that I am worthy of being loved? Mm -hmm. Can you? I'm hoping. I'm hoping. It's very not fun. It's yeah. so not fun to feel all the anxiety and, and that, you know, I'm never going to Do you think there's be a difference between stating that I can and I'm hoping? Of course. Of course. Do you think that words could potentially train a person into that state? Yes. Yes. But the thing of it is, we're so accustomed to certain language. Well, I don't remember what's the research, but how many, how many words are in the language and that we use pretty much the oh, same yeah. words again and again and again. I can't remember the percentage. Thoughts. Thoughts. We have like, you know, you know 80,000 thoughts a day and it's pretty much 90%. Yeah, the that's the the Joe Dispenza. Yeah. He says, by the time you're 35, your brain is basically going in loops, yeah. you know, and it's the same thoughts and everything. So, yeah, so part of it is to embrace change, to meet new people that are outside of your mm -hmm. regular group, that they start to introduce you to like, wait a minute, he's right. Why uh, that use of that word is better? My friends are so used to me; they're not even hearing me saying that. Right. Or may that not be? <laughs> and they might be uncomfortable with you changing because then you would be different. 
you know, my friends are comfortable with me changing. Well, yours Believe would be me now. You've chosen, but nonetheless, exactly. I think many times if a person does begin to change, yes. one, it can polarize where the friends are at, which make them uncomfortable, want to pull them back. Because if you become some bright light, that may potentially make me feel as though mine is not. It's it's dimmer. Um, two, I think that they can, uh, if they don't know who you are. I think there could be maybe like a fear of, of losing you. Yes. You're changing. So Don't they, change. So they keep you Don't in that. Don't go changing. Yeah. They, yeah. <laughs> so they keep you in, yeah. that, in that mold. I think it's a really value. It's interesting to see like people as, as different forms of, of medicines or supplements. A hundred percent. It is so important. So there was a man that I had a crush on him for the longest time. He was my dream man. <laughs> and we dated, we dated six years ago and everything. And he, he broke my heart for years. A few months ago. He was trying to get back together with me. And I was like, wow, okay, we're all older. Maybe it's going to work out. Yeah. And um, I remember we were making dinner. He has a beautiful ranch. And we were in the kitchen. Everything that I love, the ranch, the animals, everything. It was just fantastic. And I so wanted to work. And um, we were eating, making dinner. And we put music. And we were dancing in the kitchen. I'm like, heaven, absolutely heaven. And he goes, you make me so happy. You bring so much joy into my life. Let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot of being together. And I was like, okay, sure. And he says, and I can tame you. He goes, I can do that for you. I can tame you. He said it to me. And I would just tame me. And he goes, you don't have to do all that spiritual work all the time. (laughs) I will tame you. And I was like, I was polite. I finished dinner and everything, but I was out. Because I would never be with a man that doesn't want me to grow and change and, and, and be whatever God created me to be. Yeah. You know, nobody wants to be tamed, put in a box, you know, and this is all you are because it makes me comfortable. Yeah. It make, meaning him. Yeah. It, it, it just like I, I was floored when I said tame, like, like tame, like taming a horse. And he goes, yeah, taming. <laughs> I wonder with this, we're going to, we're going to, uh, wrap up cause it's like, I've got a, a thing right after this, but I, I was told from a person that's doing, helping with podcast stuff, it would be valuable at the end to create some type of like primary takeaways. If there was something that you would really want people to take away from a conversation like this or your experience working with dogs and, and people and all of that, is there any like way to distill Yes. Some things that would be... Yes. So, like, what's your advice to me? Check your words, the way you speak to your dog. Try to make sure that you repeat the same words. Sit down. Narrate your dog's life. Also, do not say... The most important thing, do not say your dog's name unless you are talking to your dog. So, when you are talking about your dog, use a nickname. Hmm. All right? Because I want your dog, when they hear you with your voice, say their name to drop everything that they're doing because you're the biggest source of pleasure, yumminess, love. So when they hear you say their name, they drop whatever they're doing and they're coming to check with you. Hmm. So words, like the theme of our conversation. In relationships words, in general. In relationship in general, but of course I'm talking, my work is through dogs. So oh, Well, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Don't bust me. <laughs> Don't tell the truth that it's really about people. <laughs> Is there anything yeah. else? It There's doesn't, a lot it doesn't, more. There doesn't need to be. But if there's anything that would be one more, if there is something that, that like you'd want people to take away. The main thing that I want p- people is to start questioning the old way of dog training. Hmm. You know, those comments do not serve. Life skills serve. Let's teach our dog life skills. Let's yeah. teach the dog life skills where they learn how to manage the impulses. That is way more valuable than teaching a dog how to sit, you know, forget sit. It got, all of that going to fall into place naturally. Let's fo- let's focus on life skills. Are you talking about the school system right now? Well, of course it is the school <laughs> system too. And you were talking how do you make you sit in a chair as opposed to this is all this is all in alignment. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like a, the school system need to be reformed. By the way, you are going to Bali next month. I'm going to introduce you to people who the kids go to the green school over there. Oh, good. Where it's completely about consciousness and done right. I think you're going to love it. Yeah. And by the way, I have a podcast coming up. I'm excited about it. I want yes, to check it out. February 12th. So with iHeartMedia. I'll put this out during the same time so people can jump over and check it out. I would love what is it to. Called? Thank you. It's, it's the Tamar Gale podcast, but it's life with dogs. Great. 
it. But how do we live with our dogs with us? I love it. By our side. I'm so excited about that. There's a, the last thing I want to say that, that's interesting in relation to like green skulls and all that stuff. Are you familiar with Marshall McLuhan? The, the medium is the, the message. No. His book's called Medium is Massage, but his like big idea was the medium is the message. And so essentially it's that uh, the information that we gather through, so the school system, for example, or gathering information off of our cell phones or anything, the mediums in which we, we gather it actually is the thing that's shaping our minds and our bodies far more than the actual, you know, the minutia of the details that are, that are inside there. So mm-hmm. we think we're in school learning about algebra and learning about history and learning about that stuff. But in fact, that, that medium, the mold that you're in, that's really what's going to be the, the determining factor of, of changing your shape mm-hmm. throughout that time. A hundred percent. That's a very interesting thing. So, so it's with like the green schools, it's just an interesting thing to ponder on. Um, the education that we're getting from just augmenting our environment uh, or augmenting the tone of our communication with each other or augmenting the quality of the touch. Uh-huh. Um, it's just very interesting. It is. It is. It's the simple stuff and yet it's in everything. It's yeah. everything. Cool. I love it. Thank you so much for knowing this. Thank you for inviting me. My God. Yeah, what's the, how do people, where should people go from here? Podcast, obviously. Uh, is yes. Else? Well, on Instagram, it's the loved dog mm. uh, because it's not about the love. It's the loved. Do you love your dog? The loved dog. And my website, the loved dog. Everything is the loved dog. And the, say one more time the name of the podcast. Uh, the Tamar Geller podcast, cool. Life with Dogs. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the amazing physical experience. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. What a gift you are. Good. Likewise. Oh, my God. What an awesome. Oh- Awesome way to start this, making me surrender like that. <laughs> oh my, thank you for making me feel so safe. <laughs> Good, what a gift. Thank you. You are so beautiful. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Really? I'll receive it. Yeah. I'm receiving it. Good. And good, 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 good. I'm a reflection. Thank you. But I'm receiving it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right. Over now. I hope you guys loved that conversation as much as I did with Tamar Geller. Uh, If you did, you might also enjoy really any of the conversations to do on psychology, which is pretty much all of them. But Gabor Mate, Dr. Gabor Mate, would be a fantastic place to go. You can go check out Neil Strauss. Uh, There's so many good ones. Um, Thank you guys so much for grabbing the Align Method book. It's been a number one bestseller since its release on Amazon, so that's really fantastic. Thanks for the reviews. Thanks for sharing with your friends. And if you have interest in going deeper into the content of the Align Method, there is a seven-day free trial of the Align Method online program. If you have any aches and pains or stiffness or you wake up in the morning and you feel kind of rigid and stiff and all that stuff when you get out of bed, the Align Method online program could be for you. If you're staring at a computer a lot, if you're hunched over in chairs a lot, which is pretty much all of us, uh, and head is jutting forward, shoulders are collapsing forward, spine is hunchy, any of those things, uh, the Align Method online program gets into the fundamentals of how to integrate more effective movement into your daily life so that your whole life can become big fat freaking opportunity to get better at this thing all right um i think that's probably enough if you derived any particular insights that you would like to share with the world from this conversation there were so freaking many uh in my opinion uh you can tag align podcast a-l-i-g-n podcast on instagram you can also tag the loved dog which is the love in the past tense dog so there's double d's there um Thanks so much again for tuning in, and we will see you on uh, Thursday with a solo episode getting into something interesting. Alrighty, I appreciate you all tuning in, and I hope you are carping your DM, and I look forward to whispering sweet mind-body-related nothings into your ear canals coming Thursday. All right, over now. Bye.